Hold on, let me bring it up. Okay, it's coming up. Sorry about that, Brother Lee. You know, my little computer is a little slow, but it's, it's coming up. Um, okay. All right, and you say Acts chapter 28. Is it a specific verse, or are you going to start from the beginning? Uh, starting at 14. Okay. You're going to start at 14. Okay. All right. You can go ahead and begin to read. I'm just, um, it's, it's coming up. My little computer. Okay. Um, verse, verse 14 says that they're going towards Rome. So they, they left, put the Oli, and now they're heading towards Rome. This is Paul when he's a prisoner of, uh, the Romans to go before Caesar and he's going to Rome because he, he said, if I be, if I have done anything worthy of death, I appeal to Caesar because he's a Roman citizen. Paul's not only a Jew, but he was a Roman citizen. He was a free born Roman citizen, not a slave, not a bondman, but free born. And it says, and from thence, when the brethren heard of us, I'm sorry, I'm in the King James. Want me to read off your screen, Sister Trey? Oh, I'm uh, um, okay. I'm in the KJV. Okay. It starts out in the KJV, so uh, that's my okay. default setting, anyway. So yeah, it does it doesn't matter. You can read from your Bible, or you can read from my screen. Um, okay. All yeah, right, so, so 15. And from thence, when the brethren heard of us. They came to meet us as far as Appii Forum and the three taverns, mm -hmm. whom, when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. In other words, boy, howdy, he thanked God. Oh, and I mean, he buckled down there, didn't he? Says that he took courage. And when he came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or the customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who when they examined me, would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I ought to accuse my nation of. of. So he didn't have anything to accuse them of other than they were trying to kill him. For this cause, therefore, therefore have I called for you to see you and to speak to you these are the Jews in Rome. Because that of the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. And they said unto him, He neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came shew or spake any harm of thee. But we desire to hear thee, hear of thee what thou thinkest for concerning this sect. So you had the sect of the Sadducees, uh, you had the sect of the Pharisees, and they're saying a sect of the Nazarene, because earlier Paul's called the ringleader of the Nazarene in another chapter of Acts. For we, for we know that everywhere it is spoken against, so everywhere that Christian is coming the about Christ, the gospel, it's spoken of against by the Jews. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him in his lodging, to whom he expounded, just like Jesus did. It says Jesus gave them understanding and he expounded upon the word after he was resurrected and met them on the road to uh, Aramaeus. <clears throat> Um, persuading them, oh, and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses 
and out of the prophets from morning until evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that Paul had spoken one word, okay? So he, it says one word. He, I mean, he said nothing else except for what God put in his mouth, and Christ gave him the mouth to say. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Esaias the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and not perceive. Jesus said these exact same words. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted. Jesus said, unless you become as a small child and are converted, shall not enter into the kingdom of God. And he says, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you, and he's talking to the Jews, that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles. And they shall hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. They were without understanding. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house. Remember, he was a tent maker. So he had to have either had money that he saved up from making tents or he was making tents and hired his own house. And received all that came in unto him. So he was a host. Anybody that came in. The Romans weren't keeping him locked up in a prison. He was in his own house. And had visitors. Although he had a Roman centurion with him. Preaching the kingdom of God. And teaching those things. Which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. With all confidence. No man forbidding him. No Roman Ever made him stop preaching things concerning and teaching the things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. So the whole salvation is of the Jews. Yes, it is. Because Jesus was born a Jew. And he saved his own people from their sins. If they're converted and born again, just like he said to, just like Sister Cherry said last night, as he said to, uh, John chapter 3, he says it to, um, excuse, help me out, Sister Jerry. Who does Jesus, who's Jesus talking to in John chapter 3? Nicodemus, he was, he was talking to Nicodemus. Sorry, that's just like he told Nicodemus, unless you are born of water and spirit, you shall not see, enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. You won't be born again. And the Jews cannot, for the life of the fleshly Jews, they have the carnal mind. That are not converted and given the Holy Ghost, the gift of the Holy Ghost, to give them the, the gift of discernment, where they can compare spiritual things upon spiritual things. But they're still in the Old Testament where they're looking at things line upon line. Mm. Paul said it's not line, it's not, it's 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 comparing spiritual things to spiritual things. That's Just right. like he said that the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. That's right. There's conversations. That's right. You can have a conversation going on with in, in, in when you're reading the Holy Bible where you'll hear the words that Jesus spoke. Paul speaks them to the T about their heart being wax gross. They, they, they think that they have it figured out, but they lack the Holy Ghost. The to, to give them the discernment. He said earlier that it was only Israel that's in the church. Remember, it says church of the Gentiles in the in uh, in Paul's writings. There's church of the Gentiles. There's the church of God. There's the church of Jesus Christ. It says that's exactly what it says. Church of Jesus Christ. Church of God. Church of the Gentiles. Because Christians were first called Christians in Antioch, Syria. 
and Syria, that area, was Gentile. Yes, the apostles were Jewish. Actually, they were Gal most of them were Galileans. And Galileans were Gentiles in the Old Testament. That's what it says. Galilee of the Gentiles. But Paul's saying, look, these you're being Jewish here doesn't help. It's 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 dead. It's a dead end now. You must be converted. Everyone's in the church. Neither Jew nor Greek, neither male nor female, neither bond nor free. For we're all one in Christ Jesus. And it says, give not offense to the Jew, give not offense to the Gentile, give not offense to the church of God. But you must be an inward Jew. Him that is of the circumcision of the heart and of the spirit and not outwardly of the letter whose praises of men and not of God. That's all I got to say. Excellent point, um, uh, Brother Lee. I'm glad that you brought that out. Um, and we can clearly see the, these people have this uh, crazy understanding, especially I'm looking in the chat regarding John chapter four, and I'm not going to divert too much. Um, but uh, to this uh, 2020 Vision TV, sir, uh, sir or ma'am, I'm not sure which one you are. Um, but uh, uh, and I see Brother Bill already gave you your answer regarding um, 1 Corinthians 11 and 5. Um, and don't stop there. How about you read all the way down to 15 because 15 will give you your answer. Um, and then the second part uh, that I see when we look at the Samaritan woman in John chapter four, um, when she's having her conversation with Jesus, um, Jesus makes it known to her um, about her faults, um, uh, what she's been doing, uh, what she didn't do, um, and clears up some things for her and even lets her know that he is the Messiah um, that they were waiting for. But he says something very profound uh, uh, that Hebrew Israelites and uh, quite a few people uh, uh, overlook, uh, bypass. This is why I say that even the words like, and he said, go say to this people, keeping on seeing on, but do not such and such. You get what, what I'm trying to say. Every letter, every word in the Bible is crucial because going back to John chapter four, they will realize that Jesus is not saying that salvation is only for the Jews, but salvation came out of the Jews, came out of the Jews, and that salvation is Jesus Christ. Second point, when you look at Romans 1 16, this will go along with what Brother Lee just said. It says that Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel for the gospel is the power of God for salvation. And KJV, it says unto, but they're doing unto and for is doing the same thing. So again, it's not saying that it's only for one sect of people. Salvation is for all who reaches out to grab it. And, and one, uh, one, another part, Brother Brian and Brother Lee, what I believe that these crazy people, God bless you, Sister Mil uh, Mama Millicent, I see you, uh, what these crazy people think that they can literally direct God and tell God who he can deal with and who he can save. Jesus proved against that. He showed examples. You don't tell me what to do. I deal with whoever I want to deal with. I save whoever I want to save. I say what I want to say, and I say that salvation is for all. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. How you going to stop that? How you going to stop God? That's really the question. And I think you already know the answer to that question. You can't. So you're really fighting a battle, a losing battle. Exactly. Isaiah chapter six, verse eight, brother Brian. 
And it says here, and I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Notice that's plural. <laughs> then he said, here I am, send me. This is Isaiah speaking. And he said, go and say to this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make mm -hmm. the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand mm -hmm. with their hearts and turn and be healed. Brother Brian, why you have me go here? Because that verse that uh, Lee just read is Acts 28, and that is the the uh prophecy being fulfilled of the first uh what we call the first advent of christ this mm -hmm. is i'm gonna say it just like that it's because that's what it is the first advent the mm -hmm. second advent is second coming when he reigns reigns comes uh comes in the clouds with as a king coming back right now right now jesus is intercessing for mankind he mm -hmm. is a priest he is the high priest over the house of god Mm -hmm. so right now, he says right here, he quoted this verse in Acts 28. This verse is actually quoted a lot of times. So what is it? It says right here, and it says, it says right here in verse 11, it says, then, and then he says, uh, right after he says, make this heart people fat and their eyes heavy mm -hmm. and shut their eyes. At least they see with their eyes and hear with their eye, ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed mm -hmm. then said uh lord how long and he gives an answer right here he says he says until the cities be wasted without habit without inhabitant and the houses without man and the letterly and the land be utterly destroyed mm. that's the reason before a certain time the land over there was Desolate. Desolate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's like the Garden of Eden. But let's keep going. It says, And the Lord have removed men far away, and there will be a great forsaken in the midst of the land. Mm -hmm. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return and shall be eaten as a teal tree, as an oak whose substance is in them. Mm. When they cast their leaves, this is key, so the holy shit seed shall be the substance thereof. So notice, this is what I was them, for last time. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So he's pointing to the holy seed. So he's mm. letting them know before, before Babylon that they're going to be destroyed. The land's going to be in destruction. And then he's going to say the holy seed is going to be the key. So when the remnant comes back after destruction, no matter what these uh, uh, fake lights run around here talking about, oh, we were blinded, we're this and we're that, 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 that. no. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Bible never says that they will lose their identity. That no, is a myth. Doesn't. That's a made up, made up thing. But right here in John and John and um, Isaiah, Acts 28, Paul quotes that. But who else quotes that? Oh, Jesus, Jesus quotes that quote verse. That. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is he quoting this? You, everybody need to look in there, look at their self and go, why is he quoting this? All you fake lights out there that think you're Israel, you need to ask yourself, why is he quoting this? Why is he quoting this? Why is he blind in Israel? Mm. Why is he blind in Israel? Why? According to this text and this Bible, Israel is supposed to be blind in unbelief until the 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 one that comes from Zion, which is Jesus, and opens their eyes. Because Jesus plainly said, you will not see me again, and you say, blessed is the one that comes in the name of the Lord. Right. All through the scriptures. Right. And 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 the key is let's go to let's go to John 9. And this is this is this is key because I want to read this one because I think sometimes. We kind of skip over this and watch what Jesus says to these. Mm -hmm. he, he's going up against the Pharisees, of course. But he says, uh, I'll start in verse one. This is going to be a long chapter. 
pay attention to every word because chapter nine is probably one of the best chapters in John. Come on, bro, bring it. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his mm -hmm. disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but the works of God should be manifest in him. I must do the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night is coming when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and he anointed his eyes and blind and uh, uh, the eyes of the blind man with clay. He said, go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is interpretation sent. He went his way and therefore washed and he came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they said, which were before him, seeing him that he was blind, said, is this not he, not this, he that sat and begged? Some said, this is he. Others says, uh, he is like him, but he says, I am he. Therefore, said they unto him, how were thy eyes open? He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, and said unto me, go to the pool of Shalom and wash. I went and washed, and I received sight. Now, let me ask you, Sashir, in Genesis, did God curse the ground too? Uh, uh, when Adam and Eve messed up? Yep. No, he yeah, yeah he, cur uh, yeah, he, he cursed, cursed it. it. He cursed yeah, the ground too. You got to till it. You got to you got to work the land for it to work for you. So yeah, Notice. because it wasn't Notice like Jesus that take dirt. He took dirt, put it on the man's eyes. Then he told him to go wash in the pool, and then they made it, uh, made it, made a made a distinction in the text. Which is interpretation sent? Mm. Who, who is the sent one? Oh, Jesus Christ. Hmm, let me keep going. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He says, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees in him that afore was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him, He had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon my eyes, and I washed and do see. Now you notice, these Pharisees know the scripture, so they understand that the ground is cursed. Therefore, some of the Pharisees, this man is not, not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others says, how can, the, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles and there was division among them they said unto the blind man again what sayest thou of him that he opened he had opened thine eyes he said is he he is a prophet but the jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him and received his sight and they asked him saying is this your son who you say born blind how then does he now see and he his parents answered them and said we know that this is our son and that he was born blind but by what means he now seeth we know not or who has opened his eyes we know not he is of age asked him he shall speak for himself these words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews have agreed already that if any man did confess that he was the Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. 
Therefore, said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again, called the man that was blind and said, give God praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and says, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that where I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, what did he do to thee? Now he opened he eyes. He answered them, I've told you already, and you did not hear. Wherefore, would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Where he hold is. On, hold on, is hold, on, hold on, back up, back up. It just shows you mm -hmm. how out of order these Pharisees are. Let me ask you a question Did Moses set out to create disciples for himself? Nope. So these people are downright disrespectful and way out of order, setting Moses up as if he was Messiah, as if he has some type of ultimate authority, the same way mm -hmm. that these jerk offs are doing today. I just wanted to point mm -hmm. that out. I caught that. Oh, it yeah, it's, pretty obvious. it's, it's obvious. Brian. Yep, exactly. Brian. So yeah. Paul was a mm -hmm. Jew. Mm -hmm. He was a Pharisee, yeah, because it and the same and uh, he was his eyes were open. And how did they open? By Jesus. And he was blinded. Jesus blinded him. Nope. Blinded for three days. And this is it. Yep, we'll get to that point. Watch this. Mm -hmm. The man answered and said it to him, Where in? is marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is, and yet he opened my eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if this man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him heareth. Uh, hmm. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of the one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sin, and doest thou teach us? Notice, they don't want him teaching them. Mm. Says, uh, says, uh, let's see, it says, They answered, said, Thou wast all, all, altogether born in sin, in sin, and thou uh, teaches us. And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he found him, he says, Do thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Hmm. And Jesus says, for judgment, now this is key, for judgment, I am come into this world that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said it to him. Are we blind also? Watch what Jesus says. Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see. Therefore, your sin remaineth. And I'm going to read one more verse because I want to add to it because this is key because I want to back everything up on this one because this is the big one right here. 